Hello, hello everybody. How's everyone doing today? My name is Scott David, and I'm excited to have this stream with you today. I'd like to welcome you to the next Make Music Day lesson, Become the Artist You Are, and give a big thank you and shout out to Collage for the last segment on how to make a dance track from scratch. Very difficult to do. Within an hour, I was very impressed with what he accomplished. So let's get into it. I want to also address that um, anything that is mentioned in this one hour segment, um, it's all through my experience, it's insight, it's methods that worked for me. They're not the best way or the only way, but they're a way. So um, it's just going to be an open format of discussing some important ways to um, become a better artist that you already are. Because when it comes down to it, we all are artists. So the five topics are going to be the best version of you, setting some goals, following through, and would you consider buying your product or your music, you know, your end project, and learning through mistakes. So let's get into it. And I want to give a shout out to um, Hans Biga, who is... Um, the studio behind me of what you see, that is, that's not where I am, okay? This is 2020. I'm not there. That's Hans uh, Biga's uh, studio in Germany, in Berlin, Germany. He's a great uh, musician, artist. That's how he's, uh, his Wikipedia, or I think his Google search results mentions that. Um, he's a great um, producer, studio engineer, designer, and artist. So I definitely recommend checking him out. He has some really cool... Um, branding of his whole um his whole uh, artistry that that might be a good example for someone looking to how can they become a better artist or have a better public image or just different in a way unique um he is one artist of many out there so let's start with uh, the most important is the foundation which is the best version of you okay Get this over here. So what does that mean, the foundation? What is the foundation? Well, in this world today, you know, we have to make a living by what we do. And when you're going headfirst into your art, it's a 24-7 gig. It is going to be... It's like having a child. That's an e easy way to say it. So anyone who is a parent knows the commitment, dedication, patience, and perseverance that is needed when you're caring for a child. So um, the foundation is pretty much your housing. Uh, make sure you you know your house is safe. You're safe. You have someone to, somewhere to go to recharge or just do your work. Um, and then your mental and physical health very important. Having close family and friends to bounce ideas off of or just vent off to is very helpful. <laughs> family is important. Also, you have to do self-care. Lots of self-care. The problem that um, some producers get into or artists is uh, physical fatigue from just mixing records. You know, going through crates, mixing records, going through a laptop, carrying equipment. So. Um, there's so many pieces of the pie to just being an artist or a DJ that many people don't see. It's all behind the scenes work. So we're definitely going to make sure that we address those. I'm just adjusting my volume here because the headphones were becoming a little bit too hot. Um, Self-care, I do yoga. I do... Um, I enjoy researching a lot. It, it sounds like a weird thing to for self-care, but I enjoy researching and learning anything new. I really enjoy that. And um, so those are two examples of self-care. Um, maybe even uh, exercising regularly, going on hikes that will really help just have a better overall fitness level when you're performing, carrying out duties for your, your events or even gigs or working in the studio. If you're sitting in a chair for over two hours, even an hour, and not moving, that's not good. I've done it myself where I was sitting in a chair for three, four hours, 
working on music, loving that process, but the um, the physical abuse, not good. So definitely take care of yourself. That is number one. Uh, and then as long as you have a job or some source of income to support your hobby leading to career path, that is very important. So the hobby is music, right? Turning into a, a real career. But you also have other hobbies like mountain bike riding or painting or going to comedy shows. Maybe you're a writer and you enjoy writing sketch comedies or just stand-up bits. So you need balance for sure. And just know that jumping into art, it's going to be a long haul. It's not a short-term turnaround. It's lifelong. Ten years ago, someone said, oh, you know, you can mix with records now that's great, but it's... It's going to be years and years until you get a gig. And it was a very long time to get to the places where I wanted to go. So that is sort of, um, it's important to know that all this effort we put in, we try to put a value to it. And the effort is, you know, my dedication to sound designing, let's say, or my dedication to journalism and discovering more of what artists are doing right now in something that I want to do. And you can get lost for sure. So the best version of you, um, it's definitely good to listen to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, listen to everything. And I'm speaking of listening to what? People's feedback, advice, guidance, direction. Don't take it with a grain of salt, but over time as you get to um, build a relationship with this person you might trust them more and confide in them to tell them more of what you want to do with your projects and they may be able to help lift you up to that next level and sometimes the bad reviews they can point out a problem that's a simple problem um, it might be the way that it's presented or who knows what the bad review is or the comments or direct message you get from someone you can have a discussion with them and that's when it's oh it's to you to have that voice of now you're an artist if you're taking that role is to voice how you really feel because we're all in this together we're team one human race and it you know you're never going to be your best i believe if you're not in a really in the best environment right so again, like your housing has to be safe and organized, clean and in somewhere where you want to live and enjoy the people and the food and the culture and everything. That is basically where you're going to be the most productive. Um, no distractions. Also, the thing with um, the reviews of people or people's comments or opinions about something you created and you wanted to share it with them and they say let's say it, it, it it's it's not great that's not great or that's stupid or that's that looks easy it could hurt but you, you just can't listen to them all the time um maybe to your mentors for sure just it, it's good to listen to mentors and that's another whole topic of what we could talk about it was uh mentorship but take in the feedback and then see what you can work with in a positive way. Never go down or in the red. Always go up or in the green. And one of the best things when you're building your foundation as an artist or just as a person is, you know, in... In what you're doing with art, you're creating something from an experience by expressing that with a medium. And this medium is music. Others, it's paints or paper, pastels. So you want to, how do you want to present yourself? Do you want to be professional? Do you want to be a bunch of freedom? What is it that you want to send to the the audience your audience very very important this is a story of when i um did radio for five or six years and 
after a few shows live, I thought and spoke to my um, my partner with the show. Hey, uh, maybe maybe we both have this idea. Maybe we should have topics or something that's really productive for someone to listen to while they listen to music that we mixed for the show and some news of what's going on in the industry. And after that, we had, of course, little secret here. I have um, I've prepared for this hour, but there's so many things to hit and talk about that it's it's hard not to go on a tangent and then come back, but we're here for a limited amount of time. But um, yeah, so let's stay focused on um, your message, okay? After I did FM, I really um, did my own PR and looked at myself at a unbiased, objective way from my online presence. So I think this might be a, a, a really good, a strong tool to use is being your own PR rep, your own PR personnel, and practicing how to objectively look at what you've created since you're the creator, you're the critique, you're going to be um, pretty hard on yourself. But again, I think all artists are. But um, it takes a lot of work to clean up how you present yourself in a public image that you know you strive for. And it might not be as uh, natural just because... You know, you don't want to offend anyone or you don't want to um, hurt anyone's feelings, right? So, or you don't want to misspeak and then it becomes a viral video or something like that where other creators, other creative people put a spin on reality. That's all we're doing is manipulating our experience of reality and creating something else for someone else to experience, right? So, definitely, um, you know, think about how you want to represent yourself as an artist to the people, to the world. How many people are in the world? A 3.3 billion? 4.9? I can't remember. Always increasing. And just today, uh, someone from Chile um, liked a post I posted about this hour session. And a few other people, I think they're from Southern California, but everything is at a touch of a fingertip, a finger point on your your computer <laughs> computers used to be the size of the room and now they're the size of this and smaller so think of it worldwide and just think of how you want to send a message to the world because everybody is listening for sure everybody's listening okay so once you have the best version of you um, you know you have your your personal life set together your individual life your friend life social life work life your hobby life new career life you're trying to get gigs, right? This is how I got into DJing for the public. It pretty much went from practicing, buy my turntables, 2010, 2010, practicing two hours a day for three months, every day. Nailed it. Very comfortable with beat matching. And then um, I was looking for other outlets like to either get more tips, share, or play, whatever. Found DJ class and totally became involved and started helping with everyone and then from there um, we started to throw events together because there's a group of us maybe like five to ten of us and then with other friends like a tree you have two friends so what is that 20 people maybe 30 total for a little get together it's nice it's intimate and so from playing for y your close friends and then playing for public it went from that to house parties, then bars, restaurants, clubs, one festival, and uh, in invitations to other parties, gigs, and uh, live streaming events. And, you know, I, I think most of the artists or DJs out there, DJs in particular, they see that one DJ in the... Marshmallow is a great example. Very commercial, popular, easy, simple, upbeat friendly who doesn't want that in their life right and uh very successful that that is a great brand right there 
you're thinking you're gonna get there. I never really anticipated of going that far. I just wanted to create music that I was already listening to, but similar. So just creating more art to share with the people. And that eventually went into 15 years of writing electronic music, doing FM radio for five, six years, and still continuing that broadcast on SoundCloud through Melodictronic FM. So Melodic Electronic Music. It's beautiful, meets so many great people all, all across the world, and really have a great time doing it. And that's because I have a good foundation, the best version of me, working on everything else so I can do those creative things. So yeah, th um, let's talk about uh, you know setting some creative goals, okay? If you have any questions, please let me know. You can reach out to me on the uh, chat box. I think it's to your right. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. You know, out of 10 years of doing music, this is the last thing I want to touch base on with the best version of you. Um, through creating the best version of me, myself, I started relationships with people, people, just people, that I would never have thought of. And I loved it so much. You know, I got to experience a lot and meet a lot of great people, people that I look up to. And uh, that is one thing that you can always look forward to. If you can't mix beside them, maybe you can write an article about them for a magazine or uh, online distribution channel. So let's talk about setting creative goals. Goals, goals, goals. Now, looking at this new slide, or not a slide, it's a uh, just a pie chart. Let's raise your hand. Who has thought of goals or dreams? Everybody. Who thinks about it? Who writes it down? Who does it? Whose hand is still up? I've discovered that the more I write stuff down, the things that can be thrown away or tossed away or scrapped, they don't end up in the next version, which is fine because, um, I think as artists, there's so many things going through their head that they need a defined box to keep all of their genius inside, all of their expression inside, because otherwise it's going to just go haywire and just, it, it'll just stay on one tangent and not really complete a project. So it, it for me, what really worked was having a defined uh, working space with uh, music production writing music and then from there there's a spectrum of creative to uh, technical I like to say when it comes to creating a song I love staying in the creative side once it gets to the middle I can do a little bit of um, sound engineering and cleaning up of what I think needs to be cleaned up properly but when when it gets tech I cannot do technical I'm not technically trained and that's where someone like Hans Biga, he could definitely do that because he's been uh, trained for that type of um, engineering for sound production. But if you, if you can just stay in your creative side, create the idea, write it down, save the project, you can always share through... Um, through words how you want that song to sound like in the future so setting setting the goals the goal I like to say first of all is let's have fun okay I like having fun with anything I'm doing even if I'm researching something and just very deep in um, it looks like I'm angry but it, I'm not I'm just really enjoying it let's have fun most important thing um, so for having fun in the music industry, there's a stigma to this, right? If you're a DJ, you do A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. So, you know, there's a, a stereotype, the stigma related to DJing, and I go to the NAMM show, 
uh, every year in January at Anaheim Convention Center. Maybe eh, every year for maybe what the past six, seven years. And I love listening to all the panels and speakers and guest speakers that, that they have coming in from all over the world to talk about you know their journey, their their experience. And I forget who it was, but it just it makes sense. Just like any business, any job you have, anything where you have to be clear, focused, and able to drive a vehicle. You, this man, he said, you know, the number one thing that is priority in the music industry is you have to be sober. And I agree, for sure. When you're working on something, networking, partnerships, writing a song, finishing it, you should be sober, for sure. When I first started uh, mixing music, I think I would start drinking a little bit, but then I could not mix well because you're intoxicated, right? So... I think I was maybe in my 20s and then I listened to a recording of that mix and I was very embarrassed. However, I, I'm sure everyone has heard it at the bars. DJ is just really on fire and don't get me wrong, they're on fire, but you might hear some clipping, you might hear a little slip here and there and you're like, oh, it could be tighter. That's every DJ and artist out there, right? So um, after I heard myself, I'm like, okay, you know what? No more, um, let's stay sober during DJ sets, even beforehand to play that part. And I just saw an increase in everything I was doing with, um, with music. Excuse me. So sober is being number one priority for setting goals. Cause if you're not, you're just, um, cheers. If you're not, you are just um, wasting time. You're exercising a muscle, but you're just spinning tires. You're revving the engine, but not going anywhere. But this is leading into where we want to go. So that's number one. Have fun. Be sober. And also um, get loose when you have to. If it's a celebration or it's your birthday or whatever, but just be responsible, you know? You have to be responsible when you're becoming intoxicated. Now, the second creative goal is definitely create your artist persona, okay? Name the imagery, the, the feeling and sound as a artist musician that you wanted to have. It, it all comes down to the font used to the, the color palette for the branding of the logo and imagery, everything. It's its almost like you're selling a lifestyle. And I, I think I've created three or four throughout my lifetime. Um, there's, there's a few, there's Mark Parkland, Leon Bloom, Lennox Miles. And I think they're, the initial one was White Gravy with my friend. He was, uh, forget his, name but that was mine back in when soundcloud was just starting up i think 2000 what six or 2008 um and it's fun it's fun to kind of start with a a, a clean slate and say okay um persona uh this type of music only and they like you know blues and whites and and grays and the darker tones for their color palette and then you can really just design more art from it. So I think that really helps with um, creating music. When I create songs, most of the time I'm thinking about, well, we all do it. We listen to the music in our cars or when we're exercising, whatever. And when we're listening to our music, we're like critiquing it, but also wanting to improve it. And um, that's a whole other deep dive into building a track I write music and then I create the I create the persona afterwards because it doesn't take much for me it doesn't take a lot of thought to create like a name it just snap like that but when I'm doing the music that needs a lot of focus I want it to be uh, you know ideal for what I hear in my head and then you know setting your goals you're gonna have small goals and large goals small um, 
what could it be? It could be buying equipment. It could be finishing a project. A big one, it could be selling that project. Um, the goal of, you know, having popular music or more avant-garde. I love underground. I love it because those people aren't following a, a trend or a pop Euler music. They're, they're writing a different story. And that what that is what keeps me really focused and uh, attentive when I'm listening to new um, artists. And, and that's really important of having really good sound speakers, even for your laptop, for your phone. Very important. And even with, um, you know, those large goals, if it seems like a mountain or a huge Pacific Ocean, start small and chip away at it. Eventually you'll get to your goal. And this, this will lead into the other um, topic uh, we're going to talk about. But um, even with, uh, and if I repeat myself, whatever. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of temptations to do things that you're going to clearly see does not focus on your path to your goal. But it's almost parallel. But then again, that's where your your self PR discipline will come in and you'll make that correct decision. It, it's more of like a pragmatic thinking when it comes to being your PR. You're you're the artist, you're the promoter. You're every you're wearing every hat, essentially. And the goal is to get in enough momentum to where you can just focus on the art and you don't have to worry about the other hats and you can have other people that thrive and want to do that, do those positions. And just like anything, one of my favorite quotes of all time, by Gangstar, I put in work and watch my status escalate. Love that quote. I think I heard that 16 years ago, and it definitely is simple and it just makes sense. If you're going to put in work, someone can argue, work smarter, harder, or whatever, but put in the work and you're just gonna watch your status escalate, your music escalate, your financial freedom, whatever it is, your gas tank from getting paid from these DJ gigs or from creating your music and then you're taking trips to Joshua Tree or Yellowstone National Park because you're selling your music so you can experience more. So just put in the work, put in those 10,000 hours So those are some goals you can set and how to overcome those goals, I guess. It's all on you. Any goal you set, think of anything you have to do, you have to do it yourself. You know how people say, oh yeah, I got my car painted and this and that, or they, I'm sorry, they say, um, yeah, I painted my car or they, they don't correctly say I had my car painted by Caliber Collision, not sponsored by the way. Just uh, first thing that came into me. I had my car painted by the paint shop. Or I painted it. I had I had it painted. Anyway. You're going to do everything to the point where, again, creative, technical. You're going to do everything you can. You're going to hit your ceiling. And then you're going to reach out for help. Another goal is to, I would say, ask for help when you need it. It might be embarrassing. It might be... Um, intimidating or not feel right but I think most people want to help and a lot of people I've met in the music industry in the past 10 years anytime I really reach, reached out to them they definitely helped me and this one guy he called me when we were just messaging on messenger he called me because he thought I was like not doing really well I was just, I said, oh, I think I said I was having a bad day, a really, really bad day. And he called me and then we talked and for him to do that, much respect, much love, Robert. So let's get back on point here of music. Okay. Another thing with setting your goals, let's say you set a goal for... I want it, so your 
you're a producer, you're make, making music, you're, you, there's a cost to this now, right? Let's say you have a studio space. It's costing me $1,000 a month. I want to set a goal of making $2,000 a month. Let's say that goal is only $200 a month. That can really throw you off track, right? That can make you kind of give up on this and get a nine to five at wherever. So with my experience, I've seen a lot of that. It feels like there's more of that than actual goals that I actually achieve. But again, this could be I have so many goals or I have high expectations that you know I'm always critiquing myself. I'm always um, never satisfied. But the ideology is always different from the reality. So keep that in mind. And nothing's against you. Nothing's personal. It's just how things are working out. Um, another goal to set is you know dedicating time to practicing writing music exploring deep down inside of you how to express what you're feeling that only comes with practice you got to put it in the 10,000 hours and definitely record yourself you can sing I sing or hum I do it a lot I do it very often I sing all the time because I have a two-year-old son and he loves to hear different pitches and tones and words and just singing and it I think it has really helped him learn to talk more and um, also when you're singing a song there's no bias to it to a child there's no bias he's either he's loving it or he's not moved by it so if you have kids young kids sing to them or play music and ask them what they think and they, they will tell you the truth um, again, with creative goals, you want to keep uh, business goals and ideas written down. And for this, I recommend having a mentor, and I recommend the Small Business Association nonprofit, SCORE 114. They're in Costa Mesa, California. SCORE is nationwide nonprofit. They help small businesses start up or continue growing. I've been using them, utilizing them, uh, for maybe six years pretty great they have um mentors weekly for one hour sessions and you can talk about you know you can have i have a list of 100 things to do then i break that down into 10 or 5 things to do that seems more achievable than moving that 100 pound mountain that 100,000 ton mountain all you know in a week or two or a month so definitely check out score um small business association great great people over there also setting goals never stop learning you know if you learn how to make the best synth sound from a sine wave using what filter and this plugin and you stop there uh, you can do that totally do do whatever you want but I've seen that the more I learn the more I just feel comfortable doing things and I've seen it help me out financially. I've seen it help other people. And it just, it's great. Learning's great. And definitely, again, when you hit your, on the spectrum of creativity and the responsibility of the technicality of projects, once you know you need help or, or hit your ceiling with a project and you want to finish it, you want to get it done, and you want to really use it for something other than self-enjoyment, you know, reach out to people, ask for help. I really enjoy people that ask for help when I was in the automotive repair industry because you're dealing with machines and uh, moving parts, heavy machinery. Excuse me. You want to have responsible people around and you want to, you, you need help eventually for, for certain projects. But that's, that's more of working on cars. And so, ask for help. Those are some creative goals for you. And let's follow through with what we're going to talk about next, which is following through. So, this is a pretty sweet image. It's from NASA Images, and it's a really high res. It's the recent hurricane uh, from September 2019, I believe it was. But following through. 
so I chose this image because it's kind of not the best uh, image to use for this but imagine all the challenges you go through when you're creating your sound your your art artistic expression with music or you're you're a lighting technician um, or just a curator of a festival or, or doing anything creative right all the clouds surrounding the eye of the storm are those challenges and you don't know where you're going which way is up where's left where's down right am I going forward backward where am I going but as, as long as you stay focused on your little boat and you have your little compass and you don't get distracted you're gonna find that all that hard work is gonna be there in the center where it's peaceful it's calm it's clear although you're surrounded by chaos which is life you built your little bubble which can close up maybe that's when we die or it expands when we start creating more and sharing that with more people and helping people and that is pretty much where I've gotten to that place a few times and it doesn't last forever this you always have to work on this because it's constantly moving life never stops wrote this song at the pinnacle of my life in 2015 I think it was October it was October that's where you want to be in the center and I experienced it a few times it's hard it's not hard to get there you just have to sacrifice other things in life and that can be material things it could be mental habits habits you have of how you treat yourself how you treat other people it's really up to you to where you want to be and I'd rather be in the eye of the storm than um, the outskirts so following through what are the best practices and the mental discipline with this well I'm I've been told that I follow through with a lot but again like I have so many thoughts and ideas about stuff and things I want to do it feels like I don't sometimes so let's see what I have here starting with following through best practices and mental discipline uh, it might help with like a um, an unbiased person to kind of see where you're at in life but like do a self-assessment um, and that can be anything from looking at all right are my clothes clean do I smell clean how's my hygiene am I presenting the best me to the world that could be a self-assessment but you definitely want to follow through with anything that you're committing committing to if you want to if you promise someone you met through networking in the field at a gig and you know anytime there's a gig or an event and you try working I don't recommend it um, because you're at the festival or the gig for enjoyment for pleasure to have a good time to relax to enjoy the music so we want to uh, we want to do that as a follow-up and when people don't fo when people don't follow up in the industry it's unfortunate to hear but it happens the squeaky wheel gets greased or or oiled is what they've told me many times that's what the mentor said last Friday but you know the self-assessment for me I took a deep dive into myself and I had some time to do this because I went through a neck injury so I had some time to kind of reflect on my entire life about nine years ago and what it comes down to it just comes down to what makes you happy in life right and uh, if you're able to find that within yourself and create it finalize it be happy with it and share it with people that's a huge success that is that's what it's all about now in the follow-through section I do talk about temptations again and something I didn't mention when I mentioned it earlier because I mentioned everything here already um, there's a great YouTube video called Adam Grant givers takers and matchmakers it's a TED talks video it's really great I think it's maybe four years old but 
it kind of gives you an idea of the temptations out there and the temptations can be a facade that leads to something or somewhere that you don't want to be and that's where you can apply this givers takers matchmakers to the work environment um, I've seen the more I give the more I get back and an example is I guess I'm, I'm giving my time my effort some money per month to continue running my SoundCloud page Melodic Tronic FM that being said I don't care the cost or the time because it people listen a few people not many people listen to it and they enjoy it and it's continuing to have a, a steady increase with um with listens so why not keep it going and that goes all the way back to 2003 when I discovered djmixes2k.com that was my um, Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole I went down into this website they had nothing but music mixes field recordings you know from the mix board recording amazing DJ sets from I think it was mainly like European clubs or venues I think so not too many in the States and just so many talented electronic artists and DJs that was me following through with um, my my crate digging my digital crate digging but yeah definitely check out the Adam Grant givers takers and matchmakers video it's a it's a great video so to wrap up that point of DJ mixes 2k that source I'm continuing that tradition with my SoundCloud page it's a small cost but the return is people that enjoy it and I meet other DJs that send me a mix I'm like oh wow this is great this is so cool where are you from again Canada or Russia wow it's it's great so um, on top of uh, following through you know following through is also socializing and working by yourself so socializing and networking is great you need it you have to do it and there's a balance to everything right there's a balance to working on your art and staying in that the eye of the storm or then going out into the chaos and seeing distractions and everything else so there's that balance as people we need to have human engagement we need relationships we definitely do I can't tell you how many times I made the choice to stay in and work on my music because that was more enjoyable. That was a few years ago, but it was great. It was a great time. Okay. So, also working in solitude, sometimes it can be mundane and just boring, and other times it can be brilliant where you come through a breakthrough with your music or your ideas. And this is very important, I believe. The again, the spectrum of creativity and um, uh, technical aspect of music. You need the creativity, but also the structure, right? So let's let's say um, what do I have here? Oh, here we go. So create the creativity that happens for me that is very visual it are my dreams, and that is one area where let's say well I have these visions these images I want to create that in the in the real life here's an example of something I painted when I was in a neck brace from a neck injury it's the only thing I could do it was my only piece and it can mean whatever it wants to mean to you but at that time I was pretty much looking watching things and listening wasn't really talking much because I was stuck at home and in a neck brace and I think it hurt to talk definitely hurt to, to eat food and liquid but once you have the creativity down that process of extracting it from a, a visual or audio sense to into a new medium that's great 
and even with um, art, uh, painting or drawing or e music, creating music to replicate what you hear in your head or someone hears in their head can be very difficult at times, but that's where your your foundation, your, your setting goals, and also um, following through with priorities because again it's all up to you you have to make the call to that mentor to set up an appointment and talk to him about what you need to happen for you to make whatever you're working on successful another big one with following through with any project it's not fun but get organized have a clean working space that's just ideal for for you to just focus on one thing and that's your art don't have clutter around you don't want that and just like anything if you're already performing your art 80 percent is prep 20 percent execution 80 percent just show up show up is what 50 percent and then from there push play start your performance your light show music performance and you're going then you're just going through the entire hour and from there that's pretty much it for the follow through so live by your word if you say you're going to follow through follow through even if it doesn't pay even if it pays well or any of that here's a takeaway from this section i was given the opportunity to um be on fm radio so i thought about okay well the time the effort the cost man this is going to be this is an inexpensive hobby i asked a sound engineer after a show and said hey man i have this opportunity what do you think he said he's he told me say yes to everything and just have a good attitude and smile on your face and you'll you'll do fine you'll succeed and it makes sense again we want to help people again everything's art and that was probably a great decision I made after talking to that guy. So let's move on to the last section, which is you made a music song, right? A music song. You made a music track, electronic track, and you want to get paid for your art, right? This is what I ask myself all the time. Would I even buy it? Would I want to buy this? Would I go see this artist? Those are things you have to consider. And most of the time, when it does go through, it's like you won the lottery. It's the best feel. Oh, I'm getting paid 50 bucks to play an hour set. Yes. I'm getting paid $10,000. Oh, yes. Just the ability to achieve like, yes, you can play here. You set the goal. I want to get paid. Playing a gig. You did it. Mission accomplished. Ask myself that all the time. Now, on the spectrum, you have people that are your family and friends, which are biased, and they can say, oh yeah, I, I support your music because it's you. You're my bro. You're my, you're my sister. You're my, um, you're my good friend of 20 years. But yeah, thank you, but did you like the music? Yeah. So... I like to um, I like to test people again with babies. Test your music with babies. See how they express themselves. I play music for my friends when they least expect it that it's mine, and then they're either continuing to dance or like, what the what is this? Or they're like, oh, this is awesome. So it's great. Put the music out there. And at the Nam show, some guy said they have a catalog of. 500 songs and only five of them are making money so that's perspective and um, we only have about nine minutes left so I'm gonna wrap up the would you even buy it section fairly quickly but um, let's see here you know would I even buy it sounds like a game show but would I even buy it when I'm listening to music I want to hear the angst i want to hear the pain i want to hear the happiness i want to hear all of those little features that's analog in that digital song if i can hear that and feel it 
I will support that artist. Last person I supported after um, listening to his album and some other things was Moby Innocence 2014. Really good album. Kind of moody and gloomy, but it's pretty good. And, you know, um, let's see here. I have... Um, Oh, so would you even buy it? Let's say you're at that point like, man, I don't know if this is good or not. Ask recording studios to just listen to it. Like, hey, I need some technical and creative feedback. Can I get your input? Because I'd love to sign with you, but this song isn't ready yet, but it's almost there. Just 80% of it is done. I need the other 20% from you guys. Maybe we can work out an agreement or maybe I can finish it up on my own. And again, would you buy it? You're selling yourself as the artist. Very important. We hit topics on, you know, how to present yourself and be as an artist, what you want your persona to be. So, you know, people are going to consume it. They're going to enjoy knowing, oh, this guy is in uh, Spain or he's in New York. Oh, like, I wonder... They have curiosity. They're wondering what you drive, what you wear, what you eat, what you drink, everything, what kind of dog you have. And remember, would you buy it? You, the artist, you are the investor. You invest all this time. Would Would you listen to this? Would you play it at the club? Would you play it at a wedding? Would you play it for your kids? All things you gotta look into. And um, lastly, learning from mistakes is the last topic. I think I mentioned this initially, but learning from mistakes. When you're learning and not earning, you're building for yearning. You are, you're gaining experience, okay? There's a learning curve. You learn the easy way or the hard way. I don't think there's any easy way to anything. I like doing it the hard way. I like learning. I love to challenge myself. That keeps me sharp. Well, let's see here. I have a really great, um, I have a few quotes here that might inspire you to never burn a bridge and, you know, just stay true to your art and self. But um, here's from Thomas Edison. I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And here's from uh, Thick Nat Nun. The mind can go in a thousand directions, but on this beautiful path, I walk in peace. With each step, the wind blows. With each step, a flower blooms. That's going right into that eye of the storm, in the eye of the storm of the hurricane. And again, Gangstar, I put in work and watch my status escalate. I love it. So that's pretty much it. I mean, learning from mistakes, you're going to you're going to learn and get burned. I got burned a few times from restaurants that were supposed to pay me. Learn from that mistake and sometimes you know, taking an opportunity, like I said, saying yes to everything, taking an opportunity is sometimes it, it might burn you, but whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And you're exercising muscles, you're exercising real life experiences. The only way you're going to succeed is by doing, not just thinking about it, dreaming about it, saying it, writing it, but doing it. You got to do it. You have to do it. No one else is going to do it. No one else is going to do it. And that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much how to become a better you as an artist, how to become a better artist, becoming the artist you are. If you have any questions, you can definitely reach out to me anytime. And I just want to give a big thank you to uh, Dance Music Initiative and Make Music Alliance for this day on Father's Day to share some 10 years experience of what I've been through to achieve some goals I've had in my life. And next up in the series, we have Tyler Green with his expertise with music, performance, lighting. And until then, we shall catch you later. Take care.